Now let's welcome uh, form. Let's welcome form two, group two students. Oh, it looks so beautiful. But I think something is missing. Oh, we don't have a Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah that's right. How can we get a tree in such a short time? It's okay. I can get one by myself. How can you get one by yourself in such a short time? How can you get one all by yourself? I know where I can find the most beautiful Christmas tree and I will try my very best to get it for you guys. But remember we don't have much time. Yes, I know that. Okay, but don't keep on talking to yourself. Remember what responsibility we gave. Well, And if you need any help, we'll be here to help you. Okay then, I will be leaving now. Bye. Let me tell you that one is filled with darkness and one is with flowers. Okay, then I'll be going now. Sure, and be careful.
remember clearly the talking tree said the path to the witch is full of flowers oh there's the path to the witch and i can see a tower which the li witch lives in hello dear young lady hello miss witch may i ask you a question please yes you may ask me anything it's Christmas and we are having a party, but we don't have a Christmas tree. So can I have your Christmas tree for a while or? Yes, you may. I'm already old and I want you to keep my tree. But can you promise me something? I will if I can do something. <coughs> promise me that you will keep my tree safely. Yes, I will promise you. We will keep your, your tree safely in our clubhouse. If you want the most beautiful tree in the jungle, take the one next to my tower. Okay, I'll be taking it now. Well then, I will go back to my tower to rest for now. Have a nice day. Have a nice day too. Should we all go to the jungle and help her with the tree? Oh, maybe she's hurt and she's crawling back to the... Hey, that's not funny. What if she really got hurt? If she is, we should hurry to the jungle to help her back. Yeah, let's go there now. <sighs> okay. Of course I'm okay. But sorry, I said that I will get the tree by myself, but now I need your help. Okay, but what took you so long to find the tree? It's a long story, I'll tell you later, but now we should get the tree first. Don't worry, we'll help you. Let's go there now before it's too late. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, Form 2, Group 2. Now let's welcome Form 3, Groups 3 and 4. The groups are working together and they are performing 40 Fortunes, which is a tale from Iran. Long, long time ago, a young man called Ahmed and his wife Jamel lived in the royal city of Isfahan. Ahmed had no special talents but a shovel and a pick with which he makes enough money to stay alive. That was enough for Ahmed, but it was not enough for Jamel. One day, as usual, Jamel went to the public bath to wash herself in the hot pool and chat with the other woman. But at the entrance, the woman in charge told her, you can't talk enough. Go out of the king. You and minister in talking whole piece for herself. Who does she think she is? Just because her husband tells fortunes? So she went home full of anger. Ugh. That evening, when Ahmed handed her his wages for the day, she said, Look at these few messly coins. I won't put up with this any longer. Tomorrow you'll sit in the marketplace and be a diviner. Jamel, are you crazy? What do you know about fortune telling? You don't need to know a thing. When anyone brings you a question, you just throw the dice and mumble something that sounds wise. It's either that or I go home to the house of my father. So, the next day, Ahmed sold his axe and shovel and his pick and bought the dice and the board and the rule of the fortune teller. Then, he sat in the marketplace near the public bath. Shortly after they ran up to him, the boy... Shortly after they ran up to him, the wife of one of the kings went to store. The winner who must help me is I was my most precious ring to the best today. And now it's me this. Please tell me where it is. Ahmed gilded and cast the dice as he despectively thinking of something wise to say. He happened to discover a small hole on the woman's clothes. As, and through that hole he could see a bit of her naked arm. Of course, this was a quite improper for a respectable lady, so Ahmed leaned forward and whispered urgently. Madam, I see a hole. A what? A hole, a hole. Of course, a hole. She rushed back to the bath and found the hole in the wall where she had hidden her ring for safekeeping and forgotten it. Then she came out to Ahmed. God 
happy place you knew right where it was. And to Ahmed's surprise, she gave him a gold coin. That evening, when Jemma saw the coin and heard the story, she said, You see, there's nothing to it. Go was kind to us today, but I daren't test him again. Nonsense. If you want to keep your wife, you'll be back in the marketplace tomorrow. of hands carried away 40 chests of gold and jewels. The theft? was reported next morning to the king in command. Bring me my royal diviner and all his assistants. But none of them could locate the thieves or the treasure. Throw them all in prison. Now, now the king had heard about the story about Ahmed finding the ring of the minister's wife. So he sent two guards to the marketplace to bring him, who appeared trembling before him. The wine of my treasure has been robbed of for the chest. What can you tell me about the keys? The wine of my treasure has been robbed of for the chance. What can you tell me about the keys? Ahmed thought quickly about 40 chests being carried away. Your Majesty, I can tell you there were 14 thieves. Amazing! None of my own diviners knew as much, but now you must find a thief and a treasure. What fails, friend? I do my best. You are Majesty, but, but I will take some time. How long? Um, 14 days. You are Majesty, one day for each chief. A long time indeed. Very well, you should have it. If you succeed, I'll make you rich. If you don't, we will with the others in prison.
back home, Ahmed told Jamil, You see, the trouble you have caused us. In 14 days, the king will lock me away. Nonsense! Just find the chest like you found the ring. I tell you, Jamil, I found nothing. There was only by the grace of God. But this time there are no hope. Ahmed took some dried dates, counted out 40, and placed them in a jar. I will eat one of these that eat evening. They will tell me when my voting day are done. Now, it happened that one of the king's own servants was actually one of the 40 thieves, and he had, had heard the king speak with Ahmed. That same evening, he heard the thieves meeting place and reported that they are chief. There is a, there is a diviner who says he'll find the treasure and the thieves in 40 days. He is perfect, but we can't afford to take chances. Go to his house and find out what you can. So the servant counted up to the terrace on the flat roof of Armored House as and he listened to what's happening inside. Just then, Ahmed took the first date from the jar and ate it. He told Jamel, That's one. The thief was so shocked, he nearly fell down the roof. He hurried back to the meeting place and told the chief, This diviner has amazing powers. Without seeing me, he knew I was on the roof. I clearly heard him say, that's one. You must have imagined. Tomorrow night, two of you will go. So the next night, the servant returned to Ahmed's roof with another of the thieves. As they were listening, Ahmad ate a second date and said, That's two. The fish were scared and went back to the chief. The servant told him, He knew there were two of us. We heard him say, That's two. It can't be. So the night after that, he sent three of the thieves. And the next night, four. Then five. Then six. And so it went to the 40th night, when the chief said, It's time. I go with you myself. So, all 40 teams climbed up to, the, to Ahmed's roof to listen. Inside, Ahmed looked at the last day in the jar, then sadly took it out and ate it. Just 40. The number is complete. Dear, during these 40 days, I'll be thinking I was wrong to make you be a diviner. You are what you are, and I should not have tried to make you something else. Can you forgive me? I forgive you, but the floor is mine as well. I still did not have done well. I know what not with, but none of this help us now. Just then, came a loud banging at the door. The king man <coughs> The king men are here. He went to the door and unbolted it, calling. All right, all right. I know why you're here. He swung 
the door open. Surprisingly, he saw 40 men kneeling before him. Of course you know, O oh, great divider, nothing can be hidden from you, but we beg you, you Lord, to give us away. Armand realized that this must be the thieves as they looked puzzled. He fought across and said, Be wild. Very well, I won't turn you in, but you must replace every bit of this push. At once, at once. And before the night was through, 40 pairs of hands carried 40 chests of gold and jewels back into the tre king's treasury. Early the next morning, Ahmed appeared before the king. You are mad. <laughs> Your Majesty, my major arts can find each the terrace or the chief but no boat. Which do you go? The treasure, I suppose, though it's pretty not to get the thieves, the boiling oil is all ready for them. Well, never mind. Tell me the, where the treasure is and I'll send my man right away. No need, my, your majesty. Ahmad wiped his hand in the air and called. Page, posh, wish, wash, mish, mosh, by my magic. The curse have re returned to the place. The king himself went with Ahmad to the treasury. And find it so. You are truly the greatest fortune tailor of the age. From this day forth, you should be my royal diviner. Thank you, you are majestic. But I may after this impossible fighting and withdrawing your terrace was so difficult. It us up all my powers. I shall never be a danger again. What I lost, then I must doubly reward you. Here, take two of those chats with for you own. And as any diviner could have ever foretold, they lived happily, happily ever, ever after. after. taco commercials? Do you find yourself staring at me simply because you've been invited to stare? Are you still staring at me? How about now? <laughs> then congratulations, you've made it! You have become everything.
everything that we would ever ask. Because when faced with the question, who's the zombie? Well, I'll let you guess. Benches in the air, the funk of 40,000 years, and grisly goons from every tomb are closing to seal your doom. And though you fought to stay alive, your body starts to shiver. Paul Bunyan, the greatest lumberjack of all time? And you heard about Pecos Bill, the greatest cowboy? Now let us tell you about the world's biggest, B fastest, bestest sign painter. That's me, Slappy Hooper. You'd better believe Slappy was biggest, why he was seven feet tall with shoulders to match, and he weighed 300 pounds even without his cap and coverall and brush and bucket. And fastest? Just give me an eight inch brush. Slip. Slop. Slap. The job was done. And so smooth. And you bet Slappy was bestest? That was on account of his pictures. And never, no one else ever made them so true to life. In fact, some folks said they were too true to life. Slappy's trouble, with, Slappy's trouble started with the huge red rose he painted on the sign for Rose's florist shop. Slappy, it's so real, said Miss Rose Red, the owner. Slappy, the sign of the... Why, I can just about smell the fragrance. But a week later, Rose Red flutter into Slappy's sign shop. Slappy, that sign of yours was too good. Too good? That's right. The beast got wind of it and swarmed all over that rose, trying to get it. They scared away all my customers, and that was bad enough. But wait till you see what happens now. When they reached the florist shop, Slappy saw the bees were gone, but the rose were watered and died. <coughs> No one buys from a flower with a withered flower or her sign, and that's the last thing you'll pay for me, Happy Hooper. Sorry, the story got around, but most folks just laughed, and they still wanted Slappy to do their signs. His next job was to paint a billboard for the Eagle Messenger Service. Slappy painted an eagle three times larger than life. Amazing! said Mr. Baldwin Eagle. I could swear, I saw it blink. Wait, I did see it blink. Then the bird flapped its wing and flew right off the billboard. <laughs> the sign was too good. That's the last time you heard from me, Slappy Hooper. Folks were getting scared to hire Slappy, but at last, he got a job from the Sunshine Travel, travel Agency. The billboard was to show a man and a woman toasting under a hot sun. Slappy painted it the day after a big snowstorm. Wonderful! Said, said Mr. Ray Sunshine. Wait, why? That sun makes me feel hot. And look, the snow on the sidewalk is melting. But a couple of days later, Slappy got a call. A 
Hello? Slappy? Your sign was too good. Get down here right away. When Slappy arrived, he saw that the sidewalk and street in front of the billboard were covered with beach chairs. People sat around in swimsuit and sunglasses, sipping lemonade and splashing suntan lotion. Get out the way! They're blocking traffic. And now, the mirror blames me. Besides, they won't need my tra travel agency if they take their vacations here. You've got to do something, Slappy! So Slappy set up his gear and got to work. He painted the sun on the billboard much hotter. Before long, the crowd was sweating buckets and complaining of sunburn. Then everyone packed up and left. Let's go this! Good work, Slappy! The man and the woman on the billboard were running off too. Just then, a leak of flame showed up the wall building across the street. Slappy's sign had set it on fire. In a few minutes, fire trucks cleaned up and firefighters turned hooses on the flames. Slappy, try something else! Slappy got back to work. He painted a storm cloud across that sun, but he had to jump clear when the cloud shot bolts of lightning. Then the storm broke. Slappy could rain so hard. The billboard overflowed and flooded all the main street. Never again, Slappy. After that, no one on earth would hire Slappy. It looked as if his sign painting days were done. Slappy felt so low. He made up his mind to throw his pink in the river. He dragged it onto the tallest bridge in town and was just about to chuck it when a voice started out beside him. Don't dump the gill, Slappy. You are going to need it. Right next to Slappy stood a woman, almost as big as Slappy himself. She wore a paint spectacle with white coverall and cap with two little angel wings struggling out. She carried an eight-inch brush. Who are you? I'm Michelle from the Heavenly Sun Company. The boss has had an eye, has had an eye on you for some time, Slappy, and he likes your work. He's got a job for you if you don't mind working in the rain. Tell me about it. We need someone to paint a rainbow this Wednesday. Most of the time, we handle all the rainbows by ourselves. But it's going to rain in a bunch of places this Wednesday, and we could show you some help. Okay, I'm your man. Said Slappy. That Wednesday morning, Slappy ran to the cannon and set it in a big cow pasture. He tied two ropes to his scarfold, then ran the other ends through a couple of skyhooks. Then he loaded the skyhooks into the cannon and shot them straight up. Boom! Sure enough, the skyhooks caught on the sky. Slappy felt, felt the first raindrops. He piled all his paints and brushes onto his scaffold, climbed on and hoisted himself up, up and up. He kept going till he was just under the clouds. Then he tied his ropes and started to paint. Slip. Slop. Slop. He had only just finished when the sun popped through the clouds and lit up what he'd done. There never was a finer rainbow. It has every color you could imagine, each one blending perfectly with the next. And so smooth, you'd never see a brush stroke. The boss like your rainbow, Slappy. Really? You mean it wasn't too good? If it isn't too good, it's not good enough. That's how we figure. Anyhow, now that you are here, the boss has another job for you if you don't mind working odd hours. Again? Tell me about it. The, uh, is the sunrise and sunset? Is the sunrise and sunset? The, uh, I guess you know the boss himself has been painted then since time began. But he's done it so long, he'd like to give someone else a chance. Okay, I'm your man, said Slappy Hooper. Slappy's been there up ever since. Of course you can't see him with the sun so bright, but he's there all the same. Night and day, the sun pulls Slappy and his rig around the world. And every time Slappy comes to Horizon, he reaches up with his eight-inch brush. Slip. Slop. Slap. 
and the never, job is done. And never a brush stroke in sight. Group two. Now let's welcome Form One, Group One. They're performing Never Cry Book, which is a story from the US. Welcome this afternoon to our annual broadcast of Mystery Murders. Today, for your watching pleasure, yes, watching, as we are performing this live on TV. We will be performing Never Cry Book. We hope you enjoy our performance. Paige, a private investigator, tried to solve the murder of Clyde, a young man who forgot to take back his library book. The suspects include Chapter, a young weird girl, novel, the librarian, and Mark the bookmarker. to learn what happens. Now, a word from our sponsor. This town's best detective approached the first character, Chapter. She was suspicious over the fact that she was eating salsa at the scene. All right, Chapter, what did you see? Oh, I wish I was a salsa Meyer wiener. Then the bookmobile would never get me. I wish I wasn't there to see her. Because then there wouldn't be a me. OK, no lead taken. There's not much between her covers. I think she's a few pages short of a novel. Okay, what happened? So loud. The murderer is a slippery of the bookworm. I need every lead I can get. Sure, how may I help you? Anything that comes to mind about the book bullet murder. You saw the murder, didn't you? You saw the shooting outside your building. Well, I didn't know the guy. It was a thrill. I don't really know. Can you describe this character? Well, this person had dark hair, average height. What about this chapter character? Well, she's always singing. La 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 la. If you ask me, she's a few pages short of a novel. That's what I thought. You can't judge a book by its cover. Right, I'll talk to you later. Don't leave town. There must be some clues around here somewhere. Now the commercial. I love my tasty salsa. You know what else is tastier? The sweet taste of murder. Wait, what? Never mind that. Have you tried salsa, 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 and cheese? What will they think of next? I don't know. Let's put this in the microwave and heat it up. How long will it take? Only 78 minutes. Whoa, it's real cheese? Of course not. Salsa, 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 salsa and cheese. Buy it now. Welcome back. What is this on the ground? A book. 
It smells like the bookmobile. Could it be? Could it have come from the bookmobile? The bookmobile music. It has to be nearby. It should be on 63rd Street. Thanks. The bookmobile, of course. Meanwhile, across town, Mark the bookmarker is very happy. Another job done. What am I going to do with all of this money? Oh no, I have to get out of here! There it is! Paige chased the giant book on wheels for many minutes to the streets of Booktown. However, Paige was running low on gas, and the chase stopped with her car died. There it is. I'll book you later! Not if I check you out first! <laughs> oh, darn it! Okay, Paige, think, think. There are too many things that are related to books. There's only one place where I can get some answers. To the library. Now the conclusion. Now the commercial. Salsa, salsa. Salsa, salsa. What? <laughs> Meanwhile, in the library. <laughs> so many books to put away. <laughs> oh, why do people always put things in their own surprise? <laughs> no, book about whales does not belong in the cookbook section. Did these people pass kindergarten? Since when did an article on gardening belong? Ballet folder! Excuse me, sir. Oh. Sorry, miss, but the library's closed. Yes, I know, but I need to look around to get some information. Fine. Right. You have ten minutes. Paige, start looking around, but there wasn't much here. The murderer was careful, professional, just as the ten, ten minutes almost up. But she found something, and she put it in her pocket. Are you done? You didn't have anything to do with this, did you? Oh, would you look at the time? I mean, too much questions, am I right? Oh, uh, the library's closed, so you better get out. Okay, now I know who did it. Please stay tuned to hear the conclusion of this mystery. Salsa. Are you feeling sad? Because he just went through another jar of salsa? Yes. Do you wish that those companies would make bigger jars of salsa? Yes, I have all these chips here and no salsa to dip them in. Well, now you can have more salsa. Introducing Salsa Salsa's new egg knitter bucket of salsa. Wow, but I bet that only comes in my old. Wrong again, Sarah. The bucket comes in 15 different kinds of so some like it hot and suicidal? That's right. <laughs> I'm going to the store right now. How much does it cost? It costs $31. <laughs> wow, a good price too. I love you, Salsa Salsa. Salsa Salsa Salsa. The person. The best. The best. The best. The best. Salsa Salsa. The store. <laughs> Now the, <laughs> now the conclusion of Never Cry Book. I have gathered all of you here tonight to solve this crime. You see, all of the clues in this case directs right to and the library. When I arrived on the scene, there are too many things that are related to books. For example, I found a novel in the street. Clyde was killed with book bullets, the bookmobile, and the list goes on. So, who did it? It was your song that led me to the bookmobile. And, the and then the pieces of the puzzle started to fit together. You see. You see. You see. You see, the bookmobile is from the library. The librarian, Novel, is the person who runs the bookmobile. So? Be quiet! Better talk! As I was saying, the clues led to you, Novel. Ye 
When I was in the library, I found this piece of paper, and it turns out that Clyde had a $13 book fine, but this wasn't his first. He owed the library $52. A lot of people have book fines. It doesn't even I think it does. You love your books, and you do not like people taking advantage of them. So you called your friend, Mark the Bookmarker, and he told us everything. He, we called Mark by calling this number on the top of the list. All right, I did. But I deserved it. As long as there are overdue books out there, my job will never be done. What kind of librarian are you? I'm of these books. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take him away, boys. Oh. 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 <laughs> Thank you for watching this afternoon. Please stay tuned next week for miss, missing mi a page. Solves the case. Solves the case of missing Miss Helen. Thank you and goodbye. Please stay tuned for baking a cake with Miss Lee right after this broadcast. Welcome Form 1 Group 2. They are performing Master Man, which is a story from Nigeria. Once there was a man who was strong. This man name was Shaduza and his brother was named Shatu. One day he said to him, The next day, Shatu paid a visit to a neighboring village. On the walk home, he grew thirsty, so he stopped by a well. He threw in the bucket. Well, not yet. Then he pulled on the rope, but he could not lift the bucket. Just then, a woman walked up with a baby. The two and the mo woman pulled together, but still the bucket would not budge. Wait a moment. Pull up the bucket for Mama. The baby quickly pulled up the bucket and filled his mother's bottle. Then he threw in the bucket and pulled it up once more for Shatu. I don't believe it. Oh, it's not so strange. After all, my husband is master man. When Shatu got home, he told Shadusa what had happened. Master Man? He can't call himself that. I'm Master Man. I have to teach that fella a lesson. We'll see about that. The next morning, Shadusa set out early and walked till he came to the well and met the woman. I want, I want to meet your husband, the so-called master man, so I can teach him, I can show him who's the real master man. Oh, I wouldn't do that. He eats men like you, but suit yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So Shadusa falls his shoulder. Did you have a good day, dear? Yes, but I forgot my bow and arrow, so I had to kill this elephant with my bare hands. Suddenly he stopped and sniffed. Wife, I smell a man. Oh, there's no man here now. One passed by while you were gone. That must be what you smell. Too bad. It would have been tasty. Then he rolled over. Medusa leaped out and bolted down the path. But he hadn't gone too far when he heard the distance. Come back here! Ah, the master man was coming. Ah. Come here! No! Medusa ran until he met four porters carrying bundles. What's your hurry? Master man's after me. The lad occupied us all. What was that? That was master man. Then run for your lives! until he rounded a bend. Then he stopped short. There beside the path sat a stranger. And there beside a stranger lay a huge pile of elephant bones. What's your hurry? Master Man's after me. You better not say so because I'm Master Man. From behind, Shadusa came another. Roar! The stranger caught him in one hand as Master Man ran up. Let me have him! Come and get him! No! Then the two strong men wrapped themselves as Sadusa watched, the two men each gave a mighty leap, and together they rose into the air. Higher and higher they went, and they passed through a cloud and out of sight. What? Shadusa waited and waited, but the man never came back down. And he never called himself Master Man again. As for those other two, they're still in the clowns where they battle on to this day. Of course, they rest whenever they're both worn out. But sooner or later, they start up again. And what a noise they make. Some people call that noise thunder. But now, Fighting forever to see which one is Master, Master Man. Everybody was Thank you, Form 1, Group 2. Now, let's welcome Form 1, Groups 3 and 4. They're performing Australians Had an Apple Pie, which is a special performance combining a poem and a tongue twister. Knife in a fork, bottle in a fork, that's the way you spell New York. Chicken in a car, and a car can go, that's the way you spell Chicago. When, when I, I went, went to Warsaw, Warsaw I, saw, I saw, I saw that could, could outsaw any saw, saw I ever saw. saw. I miss my Swiss, miss my Swiss, miss misses me. Australia's had an apple pie. Australia's had an apple pie. Brazilians beat it. Brazilians beat it. Chinese cut it. Chinese cut it. Dutch divided it. Dutch divided it. English enjoyed it. English enjoyed it. Friends found it. Friends found it. Germans got it, Germans got it. Hungarians had it, Hungarians had it. Indians removed it, Indians removed it. 
Japanese Johnny, Japanese Johnny. Koreans kept it, Koreans kept it. Loud, slow voice, loud, slow voice. Malaysians move it, Malaysians move it. Nepalese number it, Nepalese number it. Omar is open it, Omar is open it. Pakistan and Polish, Pakistan and Polish. Qatar is calling it, Qatar is calling it. Russians ran for it, Russians ran for it. Sweet saw it, sweet saw it. Thais tasted it, Thais tasted it. Ukrainians used it, Ukrainians used it. Vietnamese feel this, Vietnamese feel this. Wales wanted it, Wales wanted it. Yemeni Zimbabweans had a peace. Yemeni Zimbabweans had a peace. Thank you, Form 1, Groups 3 and 4. Now let's welcome Form 2, Groups 3 and 4. They are performing The Giant's Wife, which is a story from Ireland. Many years ago, in the north of Ireland, they live a giant named Jack. That's my name. One friend Jack is said to have done most to make a road. They cross the sea from Ireland to Scotland. Now this story happened when Jess was building his yacht. At the time we talking about, Jess was a very giant. He been took them and other giant. Co John was looking for him to challenge him to a fight to find out which of them was the giant. Ah. Ah. <laughs> this John was said to have beaten every giant in Ireland except Jack, and the thought of meeting him face to face make, made Jack shake in his boots. Well, when Jack had been working away from home a good many months, he took a uh, into his head to go home and see his wife, a lovely woman named Anna. I'm coming home, I'm coming I'm so happy to see you. I hope you're a bit hungry. She sent him down to a bag milk. I miss the food. They are delicious. But Anna could see that her husband was, was worried about something. What worries you, Jack? Uh, Anna, it's this John. I'm so worried because of him. Now, Anna worried too, but she had an idea. Go now, Jack, and look across the mountain for his coming. You're sure to see him on his way, and they will give us some time to prepare a welcome. So Jack did what his wife said, and inside the house, Anna cleared the table and began baking a new batch of bread loaves. But this was a special batch it needed for inside each loaf she put a great iron griddle. Well, at last Jack went into the house. Anna, he's coming, and he's a terrible size of a creature. When can, what can I do? If I run away, I'll be shamed forever. And if I stay here, he'll tell my body in notes. Be easy now, Jack. Just do what I say. And before the day is out, maybe his own magic finger will betray him. You see, John has the magic finger all his dream was in the forefinger of his right hand. If he lost them fingers, 
he be low, stronger than any ordinary man. He's coming! He'll be here in a minute! Now Jack, put on this nightgown of mine. What? Me? Put on the clothes of a woman? Are you trying to make a fool of me? Trust me now, Jack. So Jack put on his white nightgown and put a white bonnet on his head. Then push him toward a bag in the corner. Woman, what do you think you're doing? Just lie down here, Jack, and you'll need this baby bottle as well. Ah! Uh. Now, keep yourself quiet and leave everything to me. Just then, John came walking up fast to the house. Good day to you. Good day to you. Come in, Ben, and welcome. What a pity, my husband is not home now. Well, woman, I am not happy to learn he's not at home because I was told I'd find him here. Well, you were told wrong. Jack left the house angrily. It seems that some giant called John has been looking for him, and Jack went off to teach that fool a lesson. Then I'll go and find him there, for I'm John, and I won't rest till I show people that he's not stronger than me. Don't be in such a hurry. Take your rest a while. You need it. And if that's Jack, you're going to fight for he's twice your size and ten times stronger looking. Now, set yourself down. I'll have a meal ready for you. I've got all the bread baked. Please enjoy. Put our service to the test. Tie your napkin round your neck, sherry, and we provide the rest. Soup du jour, hot or dirt, why we only live to serve. Try the great stuff, it's delicious. Don't believe me, ask the dishes. They can sing, they can dance. After all, this, this is France. And a dinner here is never second best. Go on, unfold your men. Take a glance and then you'll be our guest, we our guest, be our guest. She set him down and put his foot before him with a big pile for bread loaves, the one she made with the iron crypto inside. Now the bread looks good. John picked up a loaf and sunk his teeth into it. Ah, woman, what do, did you put in your bread? Nothing. What's wrong with you, tall man? That's the bread my husband eats six dozen loaves of every day. You mean he eats this stuff? Sure, it is hard as rock and I lost one of me good front teeth on the first mouthful. Didn't I say you were poor with things compared to my husband? You'll regret the day he gets his hands on you. Nonsense. If we can eat bread, so can I. He picked up another loaf and dug his teeth into it. Ah, I lost my other front too. Man, it's a good job you never met up with my husband. It's more than your two front teeth you have lost. You're lying. I don't believe any man eats bread like that. Don't you now? Just wait till you see this. You took one of the low off the table and working over to the bed where Jack was lying just like a baby. This is Jack's son. He's just like his daddy. <laughs> Have a bit of bread. Now this loaf looked like all the rest, but Anna knew it was the only one without an iron griddle. She gave Jack a big wink, then Jack took a big bite of the loaf. That's amazing, and you tell me this is Jack's child? None other, so you can guess what size of man his daddy is. He must have a powerful set of teeth. Now this was just what Anna was hoping for. Oh, a grand set. Just leave your finger in there to feel them. Open your mouth now, baby, and let the nice gentleman pull in his big, strong finger. Jack bit the finger off and swallowed it. Ah! (laughs) 
Now what did you say you do to check the master? Fingers, so all he did was hurt his hand. Ah, uh, yes, you better run. Now, Jack, don't be too hard on the poor thing. And after that, Jack was free to get on with his road. Jobs by form, form two, groups three and four. Now, last but not least, let's welcome the last performance by form two, group one. They are performing Who's My Neighbor, which is a story from the US. Good morning. This is Renee Anderson reporting for the morning show. I am here at the corner of Fifth and Street in beautiful downtown Medford, asking passerby the age old question Who is my neighbor? Oh, I see a young lady approaching right now. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm Renee Anderson with The Morning Show. May I ask you a few questions? Am I on TV? Yes, you are. Oh, wow. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Jennifer. Look at me. I'm on TV. Hey, Dad, can you put the tape in the DVR and reco record this? Hey, can I show a trick? I've been working on it. Are you through? Oh, sorry. Now, can you tell me, who is your neighbor? Oh, that would be Mr. Killian. He lives next door. He's a funny guy, you see. No, no, what I mean is, in the Bible, it says to love your neighbor as yourself. Who is your neighbor? Oh, that would be Mr. Killian. He lives next door. He's a funny guy. Yes, we know. Well, thank you for your time. And that will probably be the most literal meaning of the word neighbor. Here comes someone else. Excuse me. Huh? May I ask you a few questions? I'm kind of in a rush, so... Okay, if it doesn't take too long. We're asking people on the streets who they consider their neighbor. Luke 10, 27 says, we must love our neighbor as herself. Who is your neighbor? Hmm. Well, they don't have to be my friends or family. I love them, so they must be my neighbors. I don't know, never really thought of it. Great. Can I go now? Yes, thank you for your time. Another meaning of neighbor could be those whom we love. Where are going? Here or there? Oh yeah, it's here. Uh, no, 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 uh, I don't know. Okay, north. Yo, why are you following me? We ain't following you. Nice jacket you have there, man. Thanks, but, uh, why ask him? Hold him, 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 hold Talk about being at the right place at the right time. Keep rolling. Man, he's loaded. Can you believe this? Stop talking and hurry up before somebody comes along and sees us. Oh yeah, well I think that's everything. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go. Aw, look at that little kitty. Isn't it cute? Can I pet it? Here, kitty, kitty. Apparently, you scared it away. Knock it off. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. I'm so religious. Sorry, dude. Somebody will help you. 
Probably. Maybe. Ah, oh, who cares? Somebody will help him anyway. See ya. I got dirty. <laughs> I forgot my Bible. <laughs> We got to get up in the polls. We're 20 percentage points behind. How are we going to win this election if we don't get out to the people? They haven't got faith in us anymore. We got to show them that we're compassionate, caring people, <laughs> just like we are. Huh? Huh? Whoa. Uh. What in the, are you all right? Wait, I have a better idea. We have, uh, we have lots of agencies being paid by taxpayers. This is right down their alley. The Oxfam, the Red Cross, the Mimi <laughs> San Frontiers. Wait, what am I thinking? If this doesn't go out well, I could be sued. There could be a scandal. A scandal? We got to get out of here. Eh, he's too young to vote anyway. Help me. <laughs> Oh man, we're gonna be late. Oh man, I'm so late for the wedding. I can't support her and her parents again. I'm late for my appointment, bye. What, no, for crying out loud. Hey, dude, are you okay? Uh, help me. Uh, come on, pal, get up. Oh, dude, what happened? Can you walk? Uh, I got robbed. Someone hit me over the head with something and then robbed me. I can't you to the doctor's office. Hey. Yeah? Not that I'm complaining, but why did you help me? Oh. Other people who thought I was, who thought that they were gonna help me didn't. Someone dropped the Bible on me, and some just said that they'll do, deduct their salary or something. But why did you help me? Because I had to, pal. Shouldn't we treat one another like we want to be treated? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, come on, pal. Let's get out of here. This is Renee Anderson reporting for the morning show. I am here at the corner of 5th and Shiroki and we have just witnessed an unbelievable sight. Two people ignored his plea for help. The whole incredible story tonight at 11. Well, uh, I don't make the news. I just it.